Hey guys, my name's Peyton, and I've been talking to Eric from Rotor Village, the Canadian drone shop, and he decided to tell me about this new lineup of drones that uh, he's been he's been making and producing. It's called the RVS uh, Duke, that's the 5 and the 6 inch frame, and the RVS Dutchman. The Dutchman is what he sent me. It's a 2.5 inch uh, racer, it's a multi-GP spec racer, and uh, it kind of resembles the Floss, the Hyperlight Floss 1 uh, in some ways. But I, I like I like how this is looking. So, what first thing off that you can see that um, the carbon is cut in the correct direction, uh, the 45 degree direction. So that should give it a lot of stiffness, and it should uh, it should increase the strength, and uh, you shouldn't have any oscillations, any anything like that. Just to reinforce that, he sent you some arms that are. Uh, also two millimeters. I think all this is two millimeters, but I'll check later. Um, so he sent you this, so it makes it four millimeters, uh, I believe. And you put that over top, and it bolts in. Uh, it should be a really strong and sturdy setup. Uh, he also gives you tw 20 millimeter aluminum standoffs. It, uh, as you can see, there's only three of them. So basically what happens is you, you bolt one into there and two into the front. And it's kind of like the floss, like I was saying. Um... You put it, you put it like that, and I like how this is wide because it gives you the option of mounting your battery strap and your battery on top and on bottom because it can also run on the bottom. I'm running a 450-75C Tattoo 3 cell. I'm gonna run it on top because that's how it fits the most nicely. Um, he also sends you these camera mounts for uh, any micro, mini style cameras. Traditionally, what we've been using for a while now on our 2.5 inch or uh, micro frames. It's just the micro uh, HDLRC Alpha Work, um, Runcam Swift to the micro version, any of the mini ones. If you can figure out how to uh, fit a Runcam split in there, that could probably work too. Um, yeah, it's a very versatile frame. So, as for components, I'm going to be running uh, the HDLRC 28 amp and the F4. Um, I was supposed to run the 20 amp uh, VTX, but I plugged that in and it fried itself, so uh, not much I can do about that there. I'm going to be running the uh, XT30, just traditional. Uh, I'm going to be soft mounting everything. Flight controller, I'm going to find a way to soft mount that because I like soft mounting stuff. Um, this is the XM receiver for Free Sky. Uh, he has like a a really loud buzzer. So to replace that HDLRC stackable 20 by 20 um, VTX that I burnt out, here's the uh, ATX03 by Eoshin. It's not a bad, it's not a bad one at all. Um, works perfectly fine. I think I'll slip that underneath the ESC. Um, and here's the HDLRC Elf. I did replace the lens uh, to a Runcam 2.1 millimeter lens because I just prefer that over the the 2.3 millimeter lens for several reasons. I just like the the larger field of view and everything. Um, here's here's some uh, DYS motors. I don't know if they came out with these yet. You guys can tell me in the comments, but uh, I don't know exactly what they are. I don't know if they're if you guys can buy them or anything. But let's see if that'll focus. Um, they are they are 1105. 8,500 kV. So if I'm running that on 3S, that should be that should be a very powerful system. If I'm running 28 amp ESCs. That should uh, be no problem with 3S on 8,500 kV 1105s. Um, so no problems there. And the F4 should be powerful. Um, I think I'm going to run Betaflight 3.3. There is a. Uh, it's not a release candidate yet, but you are able to test it with the new Kalman fast Kalman filters and the CPU overclocking. So I think I'm going to try that, see how that all works out. Okay, let's get some measurements. So my calipers are zeroed out. The top plate is coming in at, that's 1.5 millimeters. The support brace arms are coming in at 2 millimeters, 1.9. And the base plate is coming in at exactly two millimeters. And the standoffs are twenty millimeters, as I already stated. Um, he did tell me that uh, in future revisions, he is planning on making it thinner because four millimeters might be a little overkill. 
I, that's what he's testing right now. He's doing a lot of testing, um, working on this frame. Now I'm going to heat shrink the VTX, the uh, ATX03 um, with, with some heat shrink, if I can find a big piece, uh, let's see. So that should go over very nicely. I do like it more on this side instead of that side just uh, for stress relief when I'm doing this. I don't like any stress on these antennas because the second it comes off then it's going to fry your VTX. I don't even know how many times that's happened to me. And we'll put the ESC board on. So right there, if I can get to focus. It does show an arrow right there. That That's the front of the quad. Um, so basically it needs to go on this way. Now next we're going to mount the motors. This should give some extra support to the arms too because that's, um, that's, these beams are connected to the arms and once the motors are mounted on then that should be all mounted securely. In the mass production versions, I think even uh, if if he does keep it this way with uh, thick arms like this, most motors don't come with with long long screws like that. So I would say maybe even maybe even provide some hardware for the guys uh, for the motors. I can't imagine that could cost too much. Just a lot of people don't have it. I was lucky that I found some. 
But again, if I I feel like even if you did run only that one one bottom plate, uh, you'd be totally fine. It's up closer so you can have a better look at this. <clears throat> so basically, I'll I'm gonna make them all just straight, no crisscrossing, and I'll switch them in BL Heli. Um, let's see. Let's clean off that tip first. Always make sure you have a clean tip. There we go. Eric's just telling me right now um, that if if you want to, you don't have to use these uh, these arm sports. But he told me to use them in the first place, so I'm just using them. Uh, it should make for a, <laughs> an indestructible setup. Literally indestructible.
Okay, now those are some good solder points. Now, what I like about this stack is, see those pins? You just got to make sure you don't bend any, which I already did, but put it like that. Cool. Now we can test battery. We'll double check polarity. Plus, plus. Everything's looking good. Now what we gotta do is we gotta uh oh maybe I should add a stand off there instead. Okay, we got to add, add standoffs. There we go. Now this thing goes on top. go. Now what else do we need to do? That's all secure. Now it's just the little things. So like, um, okay so a trick for the buzzer. I was watching a video this morning of Joshua Bardwell and he did this on his flight controller. 
he said to make the buzzer really loud because this buzzer is it's really useless on five volts um i i like I'll have my quad on the field or whatever and i I can't even hear the buzzer until it's five feet in front of me so unless it's like a really quiet day um okay. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook the plus side of the battery or to the buzzer to VBAT and that will be 11.1 um, volts at the minimum, so like almost a double. Hopefully it doesn't catch it on fire. <laughs> um, okay. Okay, let's test that out. This is going to be loud. Hang in a bit. Yeah, that is really loud. That's really loud. Okay. That's good. <coughs> okay. Um, now what do we need to do? Just clean up the 5 volt because we won't use that. There we go. Um, LEDs, not using LEDs. The camera. Just do the camera. I think I might just run that buzzer like a cap and zip tie it onto the battery leads, but I don't know. It's kind of a big buzzer for a small quad like that. Oh, I could probably put that there too. There's lots of options. It's a very versatile frame. Okay, now I think the soldering stuff is done. Um, yep, I think soldering is done. Let's check if we have video. I'm gonna raise you up a bit. Okay, let's check if we have video. Oh 
reason why that buzzer is loud. That buzzer is very, very loud. Okay, we have video. Um, now let's put together the rest of the frame. I'm going to move you over here. Uh, let's, let's see. So we need... We have the World of Village battery strap. Let's move this away. Let's think. Um, okay, yep, yeah, like that. Okay, that is such a nice battery strip. I really like that. <clears throat> and I believe these battery straps on Rotor Village are a dollar right now, I think. I think they've got a sale going on. Don't quote me on it, but I'm pretty sure they're a dollar. Um, okay, we need standoffs now. I like the orange standoffs too. I, I like the orange, yeah. Um. Wait a second, this one is on a higher platform than this, so, hmm, um, okay, <clears throat> let me measure all the standoffs to make sure they're the right length. Twenty millimeter, but that is higher than that. Here, I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. This, since the extra arm is two millimeters above that one. I can ask Eric about that right now to see what he has to say about that. Um, Eric and he said that these arms, the support arms, are supposed to go underneath the plate, and the support arms are connected to the the stack. So that's like a complete rebuild. <laughs> yeah, I built it up like all wrong. It's funny. Yeah, that makes that that makes more sense. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> okay, I guess I'll um I guess I'll 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 get back to you guys once that's done. Back to this stage again. Um I think what you do here is you just run the IPEX or the UFL uh connector through the 
through that hole in the back. I'm using a linear antenna. You could probably use a, a axie or something like that. But then I'm putting that onto the VTX03 or the ATX03. Check if we have video. did here is <clears throat> um, there is an option he gives you these TPU mounts uh, to mount the camera right here but I found it sturdier uh, if you take the bracket that the Runcam Swift uh, any of the micro cameras come with uh, see that metal metal plate and you take a M2 nut and screw it into there so that's what I did and it's really secure um, what I'm doing now is I'm taking uh, the buzzer and I'm taking there's two little holes for zip ties um, I'm putting putting the buzzer there uh, hooking up th that to, to VBAT so it's really loud I'm just gonna zip tie it down there so this is the Rotor Village RVS Dutchman all finished up um, I'll quickly go run through with how I built everything um, so make sure the arms the support arms are on the bottom if you're if you're planning on building one. Um, the buzzer, I really like this design. It's got a little holes right there for uh, for zip zip ties. You can really mount anything, but I decided to mount my buzzer and it fits perfect in between the stack. I've, I'm running a full-size buzzer because I need my buzzer to be loud. Um, and then I also have, I don't have a diversity receiver, uh, so I'm just running one antenna. It's a FreeSky XM, so I just mounted it like that because I I couldn't find a better way that wouldn't get it chopped up in a crash. Um, so that's what I went with. Uh, the VTX03 and the XM, I just put it uh, loosely in there, but it's, as you can see, it's very tight. Uh, it's sandwiched between the top plate and the, and the stack, so that's not going anywhere. And uh, I broke the connector on this uh, ELF camera. I'll try and get a close-up. I broke the connector, and it... Uh, I couldn't find any more connectors, so I had to direct solder it right there, and that works fine. And uh, so how I how I mounted that the uh, the HELRC Elf camera is through that aluminum mounting plate, and then I used an M2 bolt and an M2 nut uh, right there, and that that makes it very secure, and that should be really nice. I still need to figure out how I'm gonna get. Uh, the XT30 to bolt down maybe through the battery strap or something so it doesn't get chopped up uh, by the props. So if we get the scale out it's all zeroed out and the all up weight with the 3 cell 450 milliamp lipo with the props on is 124 100, grams um, which isn't the lightest, but it's pretty light for uh, for a 3S micro build. 81 grams dry weight with the props on, no battery. Um, isn't the lightest setup, but uh, that's that's allowing it to have uh, not not any flex and a lot of durability. I am running a linear antenna. I do plan to get an axi soon uh, so that I get better reception. Yeah, and then I'm running 60 degrees up tilt, 
with Beta Flight 3.3. So I tried the 3. Point, or uh, Beta Flight 3.2. I tried 3.3, but uh, it didn't really work out. It's still really early in the beta testing phase. Uh, with when Beta Flight just keeps crashing with it on and stuff. So uh, I'll, that's a separate topic for a separate video. So I am planning on making this a three-part video series. Um, I'm doing the build video, which might be a little long. I don't know. I'll get to editing and uh, editing the video today. Um, but then the second video will be the flight and the maiden, and then I'll do some pin tuning and bring it out again. Uh, show you some DVR footage and stuff like that. And the third video uh, will be will be pros and cons, things I want to see. If you guys want to uh, want me to test anything or uh, want want to see. Uh, or have a con and want me to uh, show it or something, leave it down in the comments and I'll uh, I'll reply to all the comments. Um, so yeah, last video will be more of a pros and cons sort of thing. Um, one con I did find already, m mostly the frame is like perfect. Um, it's it's really a perfect frame. But one con I did f find is uh, this HDRC stack with the 28 amp ESC F4 and the TX20, um, the one that comes in a in a set. It does not fit in here with 20 millimeter standoffs because these are 20 millimeters tall and the the stack is 22 millimeters tall, so you'll need to figure out a way to fit that. But I did tell Eric that, and he said that uh, he said that he's working on looking at making maybe a 25 millimeter standoff an option and a 20 millimeter standoff an option, uh, so that that'll get fixed. Anyway, so uh, uh, DVR footage and Maiden and PID tuning should be coming in uh, one or two days from now, so subscribe and uh, make sure you don't miss out on that. There is a RVS uh, Facebook page that you can join. Um, I think it's got only a couple members right now, but if you have questions and comments, you can, you can ask them there. Uh, it, they're really helpful there. One of the biggest things that uh, you guys are probably wondering, and that I'll keep you posted about, is the the sport arms and how they make the arms four millimeters instead of two. The carbon is already cut in the correct direction, which makes it a lot more durable and gives it a lot of strength. I don't think it's necessary. Um, in a couple of days, I think I might be taking those off to see uh, how much flex uh, is is added to the system and how much. Uh, durability is lost. We can test that uh, in a couple of days. Um, I'll keep you posted on that. For now, subscribe and I'm going to go.